I've always been interested in music ever since I was really tiny. And I think what really gets me about it is the way that your brain is engaged and your heart is engaged at the same time. So it's and sort of the, head, the brain and the heart play off each other in really interesting ways. And I've basically been thinking about that for the last 60 years. <laughs> Film is, has always had music. Um, when films began, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century, they had, they had live music because they didn't um, have good means to record more than about, I don't know, I think it was something like 30 seconds of music. So they had pianists and organists and bands and so on who would accompany, the, uh, accompany silent films. And the reason they put music to start with was because the projector made so much noise that they needed something to mask the noise. And also, I think um, that if you look at very, very early silent films, everything's very jerky and it looks very unrealistic. And if you have a live band playing continuous music that's sort of smooth and just sort of rolls from phrase to phrase, that sort of makes your ear trick your eye into thinking that the, that the film is more continuous than it actually is. So, um, so yeah, films have always had music, and music's enormously important to film. The question of sort of how, how to match a tone is, in a film is a really interesting one, because actually the music creates the tone. So if we take the example again of somebody alone in their house doing daily business, um, you know, as I say, washing the dishes, you know, tidying up, whatever. If you have sort of jolly happy music to that, that's a completely different thing than if you have really creepy music to it, right? And you're going to see that scene completely differently if there's creepy music versus if there's happy music, right? Or if there's a song that everybody knows, you know, the person alone in the house could just be listening to that song. That could be like a representation of what's going on in their head. And that again means something completely different. Pick a scene and write or choose three completely different musical scores for it and see what happens. Because that scene is going to look totally different. Anti-penultimate. <laughs> Why is that? Well, it means the one before the one before the last. <laughs> and it's both very fancy and very... Um, it's sort of snotty, but it's also really practical. <laughs> so I like the combination of snotty and practical, I suppose. <laughs>